Hey guys, this is Claudio Giuliano here, and today I am coming at you with a new video. And in today's video, I am excited to give you guys a overview of the new iPad OS. So if you tuned into WWDC this year, I'm sure you know that Apple announced a lot of great things. And one of those things is something that I've been calling for for a long time, for many years since the original iPad. I've always thought the iPad should have a variant of the operating system on it. And that's what we have now. So if you've been following along with me over the years, you know, one of the things that I like to do is talk about the future and what I think the future is going to hold. And we can trace back to videos from years ago, going back to 2015. We can trace back to posts going back to 2010, 2011, speaking about the things that we now have today with iPad OS. And even if we go back to a recent video I just did uh, around six months ago, um, shortly after I did the 2018 iPad Pro review, it unfortunately got caught in one of YouTube's weird algorithms and didn't rank up how the other videos do. But if you go back to that video, pretty much everything I spoke about in that video is now a reality within the iPad OS. And that platform evolution that I've been talking about all of this time over all these years is real now. It's a reality and it's very shifting and game changing. So we're going to get right into it and we're looking at the new home screen. So when you start looking at the new iPad OS, you're going to see these new smaller icons. In person, they look much better than the old setup. It doesn't come through great on the video. Um, now, we also have the ability to pin widgets to our home screen. And all around, the OS feels like it has more space visually, and it looks really great. The smaller icon grid uh, makes a lot more sense for the form factor, especially the newer form factors. As you can see here, I just swiped over, and now we have our widget view. We can choose to pin that there so it's always there, or we can just swipe it in. Now, I'm not really big on widgets, honestly, but I do like the ability to swipe it in and out. It's very nice. Another thing that you are probably noticing here is the new dark mode, which is very nice. It looks great. You can toggle that on and off right from control center. You could go into your light mode and you can go right back into your dark mode. And I just really enjoy the look of the dark mode and that is carried through across the OS, like in settings and in other apps that Apple makes like mail and things like that. And it just has a really great look. So I've been keeping it in dark mode the entire time. I just really love it. So it adds a fresh look to the whole operating system. So if you guys didn't tune into that video I did six months ago, I think you guys should go back to it and check it out. It's pretty cool to hear the things I'm talking about become a reality. And one of the first things I did when I got the operating system installed was I went right for the mouse support. Now, what I said in that video from six months ago, and I've said this plenty of times in the past, even years ago, that I always believed Apple was actively working on mouse support. Now, it is built in as an accessibility feature, and I believe this is just the foundation, the very start of what will become a forefront feature. Now, of course, we're always going to still use the iPad with that multi-touch hierarchy that it has when we're using it in our hand, when we're illustrating with it and things like that. So that's never going to change. But even as it is right now, the mouse support as an accessibility feature, which is awesome to be here for people with special needs who would really actually need this. But even with it being an accessibility feature, it's set up how you would want it to be set up. It works like any other mouse. As you can see here, I have my Arc Touch mouse connected. Uh, totally wireless Bluetooth works beautifully. As you can see, the gestures on the mouse are working. You can see how we can operate. The mouse works how you would want it to work, and it works with the precision as well. And one of my biggest use cases for mouse support is for the many years that I've trained as a vector artist using the mouse and pen tool and making 
vectors through shape and pen tool. And this is something that is a big part of my customer project workflow. And I wanted to show you guys the precision of the pointer and the mouse. So I'm sure you guys have seen other videos showing the cursor off. And from looking at it just in a video, you would think this might not have accuracy or you might not be able to work with it properly, but that's not the case. It has accuracy and precision. And right now I just hopped into Vectornator. As you can see, I was using the pen tool. I just grabbed some shapes, I'm moving them around and I'm doing this with no problem. And I'm doing it with precision, even in beta one. And also, you know, like I said, this is just the starting foundation. This will become a forefront feature and I'm sure there will be a variety of cursor options that match the operating system. Um, and I'm sure we'll have some kind of actual pointed cursor option that is a little bit larger, not tiny, like uh, on a desktop PC, but I'm sure we'll have other cursor options in the future. So I want to show you the precision of the cursor a little bit further. So right now we are pulling in some text and I want you to see the precision selection that I'm making here when I'm resizing, when I'm selecting the entirety of the text, when I'm changing fonts. Um, as you can see, we're doing this with no problem. And if you take note of how I'm moving around the user interface with the cursor and the mouse and how this is happening with ease and with precision when I'm resizing things. So this is one of my biggest use cases for the pointer input. Now I have Affinity Designer opened up and I wanted to show you the precision here with the mouse and the pen tool uh, doing specific things like changing the graph for our pressure when we are laying down a stroke. So we are getting that same precision in Affinity Designer as well. And the next example I wanna show you I think will be the best example to show you the precision that the pointer has. So we're going to do a selection with the mouse and pen tool. So there I am, a site you don't see often on the channel, but I grabbed a quick picture that was in my library to use for this. And as I'm selecting this, uh, I'm using the pen tool, how I've been trained to use this kind of tool for years. And it is working out great. And again, we're only in beta one, so I'm sure apps will update to have better precision for this cursor, but as it is right now, just based on the system-wide settings, uh, you can see the selection that we're making here. So now I'm gonna go in and do some finer selections and correct some of those curves. So we're going in now and we're correcting things, and I have to tell you guys, you know, for the first time I am doing this process with the iPad, with a mouse and the pen tool. And I have to tell you, even though this is an accessibility feature, this is game changing. So now we're making our selection. We have the background out. And I just want you to take a look at the accuracy and the precision of the selection we just made. Um, this is big for me and I really think this is quite shifting for the iPad. Another big evolution is with the file system. And this is another thing that I've always talked about that I said was going to happen, that the file system would be fully opened up, that USB-C, everything would be supported when it comes to drives, and that is the case now. So you can plug in external storage, you can plug in thumb drives, uh, you can plug in a camera directly, the file system is going to read it, you now have full native support so you can work directly natively you can make files on the native hard drive it is opened up we also have the ability to zip and unzip so we can compress folders and files and this is going to be great for a variety of professionals and it's going to be great for a variety of use cases from actual art files for your clients zipping them up and sending them over in bulk um, for things like brush set creation. So now for the first time I have the ability to zip up all the brush sets right on the iPad. So I can zip this entire folder up, I can get it right up to the store, and now you guys can download it 
right to your native hard drive and unzip it. As you can see what I just did right there, there is the ArtStudio Pro brush set. I just clicked on it, it unzipped. You can see everything that was contained inside that zipped folder. This is another game changing thing. This is gonna be great for all of you who are customers of the sets because you're going to be able to download the sets directly on the iPad uh, like you never could before. For the first time, you're going to be able to just easily unzip them with no problem. So now I want to get into the new multitasking stuff, and I want to show you the evolutions here. First, we're going to show it with the mouse, and then we'll show it in the touch scenario. So as you can see here, I just pulled a bunch of apps on top of Art Studio Pro. We still have the ability to go into split screen mode. Um, but now we have much more control over the variety of softwares that we have open and we have much more control. As you can see, I can fan them and I can flip through them so I can easily get to something else when I am multitasking. So this is great. As you can see, working great with the mouse. If I swipe up, I now get a view of everything else that I have open, and I can simply swipe them up to get them out. And this really works out much better. You can now also open two instances of the same app. So when things are ready in the fall and developers have things set up, you'll be able to open Art Studio Pro up twice or Procreate. Um, also, the side-by-side -side mode feels more fluid, and it also feels easier to switch those apps into the one that you want at the forefront as the main app open. So really nicely done, and there's other multitasking features that I can't get into everything, but over time, we will go more in-depth with this as this evolves and as we get closer to the fall with the full version. So now we are doing the same thing just with multi-touch and as you can see that fluidity and um, just really nice, really nice to be able to flip through the different things that you have open and easily get them out of there when you want to get them out of there. Now another awesome thing is we get this new keyboard. We have the floating keyboard which has swipe abilities which is really nice and also I'm finding it to be accurate. So when we long press, we can now get the mini floating keyboard. This is very useful, and I am really glad that they uh, put this back in because this actually was in iOS a long time ago, and they took it out. But uh, definitely makes sense being in here. Now another major evolution and another pretty game-changing thing is the full desktop class browser that is coming with iPad OS. This was another thing that I talked about in the video from six months ago. I said that we will see the browsers evolve and now we're also going to see the platforms evolve. Now it's going to take time for this to be really fully supported because platforms are going to have to evolve to better take advantage of the form factor. But as you can see here, various web platforms now work. Like for example, the Wix editor works from WordPress, Squarespace, all different web platforms actually work here. Um, but they have to be set up for the form factor and that's going to take some time. Again, this is beta one, but I just wanted to show you this was not possible before. Something like Wix, uh, the Wix editor did not open up in mobile Safari, neither did things like WordPress and other web platforms. And I wanted to just show you that working here uh, because it shows us that we have an entirely new engine here with the browser on iPad OS. So we're getting that desktop class browser. Again, you can access YouTube. Now, you were always able to access YouTube. A lot of people didn't know that when you hit the share tab, you could get the desktop version of YouTube. I showed you guys that in the video six months ago. But it was kind of hidden because you had to go to the share tab and request desktop to get to it. But when you did that, you were able to access it. But now we have a desktop class browser, which means YouTube can evolve to really actually support this browser so we won't have those bugs that we were seeing and it will be a much more full experience. And I also noticed in Creator Studio when accessing things like the editor and things like that, it did feel even more fluid with this new desktop browser. 
So this is another game-changing thing. And another reason this is game-changing is going back to files that we can zip and unzip because now we can get things up into the web. If you run stores, you can get those things up now right from the iPad. So from downloading to uploading. Safari also has a new downloads manager as well. And you have the ability for those downloads to go directly to the native file system when you download something. And Safari has a bunch of other advancements that we will show in the future. So here is another thing I really wanted to show you guys. This is awesome. The new voice control. Right now I am controlling everything with my voice. This is another awesome accessibility feature for people with special needs, but this is also another feature that is able to come to the forefront. As you can see here, I'm doing everything with my voice. When I'm saying swipe up or down, you can see when I'm browsing the web, I am able to do that. It's very fast. This is awesome. I've been really blown away by how accurate this is in beta one and it's only going to get better over time so as you can see if i tell it to zoom in or zoom out it's able to do that when i say go home it takes me to the home screen i'm in our studio pro i'm using my voice to control the zoom in and zoom out if i tell it to pan left or right it's going to do that uh, I can open control center, notification center. I can go into any app on the system. When I go into the voice control settings, you can see it can learn special vocabulary. We have the ability to set custom commands and a bunch of other options. This is one of the most awesome things that is built into the new iPad OS and iOS 13 in general. Now, another thing that has gone through some nice evolution is the Photos app. We can finally edit video in the Photos app. We can rotate video. We can crop. We also get the various color settings that we can work with right in the Photos app. And they have always had some really nice options when it comes to uh, the edits. So this is great for quick edits, but also I can picture taking these edits into LumaFusion for more full real videos and this is just really nice to see. Also overall the Photos app just has a much more clean and nice look. Notes is also revamped. We get this nice new floating toolbar. Uh, this is something that Apple showed off on stage and they have taken the pencil latency down from 20 milliseconds to nine, which is crazy. Now I'm hoping that Apple releases something to developers, third party developers that allows them to take advantage of this new nine millisecond uh, latency because right now it's really only the notes app that's able to support that. Uh, but we're still very early on. So maybe more is going to come out for developers uh, in the future on this and how to take advantage of this API if there is one because it is noticeable in the notes app. It's crazy fast. So guys, that's going to wrap up today's video on the overview of the new iPad OS. And this is really exciting. It's also game changing in many ways. And we have a lot of major shifting evolutions that are now here. And if you've been following along with me over the years, you know, these are things that I've always been talking about. So to be able to finally see them, to have these things here, uh, this is going to really change the iPad. That future that I've always talked about is now fully here. Now, of course, we're only in beta one now, and this is not coming until the fall. So we have time until this comes out, and there's going to still be a lot of things that have to evolve along with this uh, when this comes out in the fall. But as you can see, the evolutions brought forth here are really the things that I've always wanted to see, the things that I've always called for, and the things that I've predicted that were coming for many years going back to 2010 and the original iPad. This is a really big leap forward for the iPad, especially the iPad Pro, and this is going to be a real game changer when it comes in the fall. Uh, it's a really big step forward, and I think when you guys get to check it out and get your hands on it, you're going to really notice it and love it. Once again, it opens up all new doors and possibilities. Guys, I want to thank you for tuning in today. If you like this video, it would be great if you can share it with your friends, if you can give it a thumbs up, if you can drop a comment. But most of all, it would be best if you can subscribe. We will be back with more content on the new iPad OS. Have a great day.